Library computer, data being received. Casting from the deep depths of cyberspace, this is Darn IT Podcast, Cybersecurity Made Simple, and I am your host, Darnley G, Chief Technical Architect of Darn IT Group. Today's episode, episode 7, is about facial recognition, fate or flaw. Now, I understand this is a hotbed topic for sure because this really sort of goes into the whole privacy thing Um, because your face is you, your face is unique. Your face is what identifies who you are. When someone or something tries to take that away from you, there is hell to be paid, right? Now, we have struggled as a society as a whole for many years in assuring that our privacy is being accounted for and with the digital age of information our face our biometrics as you will and our data that identifies us are literally spread across the internet dark web everywhere and this is a concern and this episode we're going to sort of talk just on facial recognition because that's the topic for today um (laughs) but we have to understand is this something that we must endure moving forward or something that we must consider changing immediate future now there is a story um recent story in the news um with uh, clearview ai Uh, it's all over the media uh, social media um, where they have scraped over 3 billion face prints. Let me say this again. They have scraped over 3 billion face prints and sold them. And word has it that they may have given them away. So I don't know about you, but this is something that is very concerning to all of us. That should be concerning to all of us. Because according to this article... Uh, by Naked Security, there is over 600 police departments that can literally identify people in seconds, which on the surface seems great. You know, it really helps law enforcement catch the criminals, uh, catch the people who deserve to be in jail or who deserve to be locked up or to be punished for their crimes. I am not, to say the very least, against that. I think however technology can help eliminate or decrease the amount of criminals that are walking in our streets free i am all for that but again the question i ask you guys is at what cost at what cost to our privacy so these are the things that we must be very concerned about when it comes to being okay with something um, by giving control to a cause because we don't want it to get to the point where we are literally delivering our ourselves to corporations and businesses without really thinking about it, right? Which, which without, without taking things into serious consideration. So um, I know according to this article that social media outlets like Facebook and Twitter have asked uh, Clearwater um, to um, re- stop scraping their social media because on those platforms, for example, you can get your face from these these applications. Um, there's other apps that are also involved with this as well, but three billion faces have been removed and collected in this database, which is very concerning. Um, Clearview said that it was only going to be used for law enforcement. Now, this is coming from the so-called horse's mouths, and I can tell you from various examples when an organization says please trust us we will not do anything mean and we will not lose your data is usually full of it and i take that for not for face value at all because they're sitting here saying that they're only going to be using this information for law enforcement which on the surface again seems like a great idea but if you peel back the layers a bit 
um, it becomes a bit more concerning. The benefit to this is that the accuracy for law enforcement is 99.6%, which is amazing. But what is the difference between public information and consent? I think that's sort of the conversation we all must have when it comes to this. Um, understanding as well that when we post information like videos and pictures online, we are in essence giving the organizations we're giving that information to access to our public information like our faces, for example. Um, also, let's define what is not public, what is not considered to be public space. Um, I think those lines are very blurred um, between social media giants and our own privacy. I think the law is a bit convoluted in that regard. And I think we really need to take uh, a bit more effort and time to understand that where we are putting our data, where we're putting our faces, for example, and how that information is being utilized. Obviously, with Clearview AI, um, in terms of scraping that information from these social media profiles, they, they could do it, so they did it. Uh, another example I can could find was um, back in 2016 uh, with LinkedIn versus HiQ. Um, they were basically creating a, um, a platform that could um, give some sort of summaries for employee skills. So if someone wants to use HiQ's applications to find the right employee for the organization, HiQ basically utilized um, links, LinkedIn's um, features to scrape that information to create that so that they can go sell it off to uh, potential employers. Um, now, you thought maybe uh, because LinkedIn uh, started sending cease and desist letters to this company for them to stop what they're doing um, because it violates some terms. Um, really, it actually went against uh, LinkedIn's uh, favor uh, where it told them to back off and stop sending cease and desist letter letters to uh, HiQ. So that this is still ongoing even in 2020. Um, but this highlights the importance of where our information is, is residing and how that information is going to be used. This is a great example, a great recent example of why we need to have laws in place to ban or pause law enforcement secret use of facial recognition. A lot of facial recognition apps exist today and you see those in law enforcement and in airports, for example, um, which can be circumvented. But the fact of the matter is, is that these departments have all of our faces in there and they're using it for even today, they're using it for live recognition. So it won't be hard for any of them to use Clearwater's uh, application, for example, to identify us. And um, even, even, even if we're at public protests or um, political protests or what have you, um, law enforcement can use that information um, against us and could basically build some sort of profile against us. And again, um, it's not just necessarily for the bad people, it's for anybody. And um, if you wanna look at an example, look at China. Look how China uses um, very advanced fa facial recognition software to identify its citizens. And it literally uses that information against the people. Um, they are a communist country, don't get me wrong, but um, they utilize technology, they utilize facial recognition to set a sort of standard of society. Um, it berates people um, if they're doing something wrong or uh, or going somewhere wrong or doing something that shouldn't be. Um, and it also encourages people and rewards them for being upstanding citizens. Now, again, on the surface, that isn't bad. Uh, it seems to be a great idea. But when you peel back the layers, it really kind of takes away from the freedom and liberties that we, um, we take for granted here in North America. Um, and the fact that they could use the Chinese can use that information, manipulate people. And that's kind of where the area gets even grayer. It's because as great as this technology is as great as it, as it is to help law enforcement. And again, I'm all for catching the bad guys, but when we start taking away some of our liberties and our privacy, 
that's when someone needs to start ringing an alarm bell and start saying, we need to have a discussion about this and we need to make sure we have laws in place from all governments to assure that our information is being used and that the forces that are using this information are being regulated themselves so that it doesn't get misused. Um, ergo, what happened with the NSA when Edward Snowden blew that whistle. So these are the things that we all must take into consideration when it comes to protecting our faces in this digital age. Thank you for listening to Darn IT Podcast with Darnley G. If you like her show and want to know more, like or subscribe or please leave a review. Remember, look both ways before crossing the information superhighway. Safe computer, everyone. Bye.